Want to hear a more diverse perspective on art? Tune in to Speaking of Art, the official podcast of Sharjah Art Foundation, featuring conversations with some of the most prominent artists and curators from Asia, Africa, and around the world. Listen to Speaking of Art wherever you get your podcasts. So we're focusing on that. In the studio, I have uh, hmm, a slippery sweetheart of mine. Eh? Rose Edufu is a principal nursing officer. Officer with the Reproductive Health and Family uh, Planning Unit of the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. Hey, Rose. Hmm. Akwaba. Yeah. Eh? Akwaba. Yeah. But you're most yeah, welcome. Yeah. It's been ages, thank eh? You. Sure. Looking sure. good as always. Oh, thank Continue you. Continue to lead me into temptation. Oh, me, you could have said that here. I know the way. <laughs> oh, but temptation to anyway, bring you into the, God yeah, for the temptation to bring you into the studio. Bring me here. I know, to Educate right? and extend. I know, Your right. expertise. I know, right? Mm. Because seriously, when, when you called me, I was so excited. Mm. We were like, ah, this year we haven't spoken eh? and I've not had opportunity to come here. So but I'm I excited. know you guys are working so hard you know, in right? all the units I mm. reach out to mm. to uh, resource this program. So I'm so grateful that you mm. agreed at last minute, mm. right? So it's good to have you. Another Same year way. is upon us, another cervical cancer month. Sure. Huh? What sure. have you guys been doing in Kolebu? Okay, so um, I think good afternoon to our cherished listeners. And once again, I'm excited that we're going to talk about cervical cancer and its related issues. Right. Um, for us, usually January becomes the advocacy month. Okay. And then because it can be a bit stressful combining with the regular activities right. in the office. So we try to do talk, 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 talk across corners okay. from media platforms mm -hmm. to the other institutions and then in february we usually start our screening so mm -hmm. currently what we have on our uh, bill we have um a webinar coming off on wednesday, wednesday yeah, sure 31st. it's going to be an awesome session right. i know can anybody we, mm -hmm. hook up can anybody sure, sure. So that we really want everybody to okay. As you share you share the possible. details, the password, mm, and everything mm, with me. Mm. So I'll make sure Abeku shares that as well. That is great. All right. That is great. I'll okay. do that. And then from February fifth, we're going to start with our reduced cost screening right. because yes. Usually, the cost of screening can be a deterrent to some mm. women. Right. And so, they wish they could screen, but you know... To a um, lot of women. A lot of mm. women, that is it. So, Joy. around this period, uh, partners, FM. especially the laboratory partners, yeah. are able to assist us with some level of um, support okay. so that we can highly discount our services to aid a lot of women to, to screen. And so, we're going to have the HPV DNA with the pap smear. Right. Usually, a combined test which wow. currently goes for 320, we'll go for 220. Okay. And then the liquid-based cytology sampling, okay. um, would, it is 170, but it will go for 100 Ghana cities. Right, so... It's going to run for three months. Discounted yes. screening sure. and sure. testing sure. for three months. For three good months. Well, it's, good. it's only reproductive health that does that. That's and you know, good. we always run unique service. Right, sure. but you know, sure. you know, sure. I always emphasize, listeners, that, you mm. know, don't wait for a discount. We're talking serious sure. stuff. Exactly. Right? Uh, exactly. Losing 1,700 women mm. every year mm. uh, through this type mm. of cancer is serious. Mm. So let's get to it. Uh, mm. What is cervical cancer? Okay, Rose. so thank you once mm. again. And I know we have heard a lot, but just to simplify it yeah. enough for us to appreciate um, we would first have to look at the female reproductive organ okay. briefly and then starting from the external genitalia. Right. We know we have the vulva there. Okay. And then when we go into the area that we call vagina, mm -hmm. we have it there. And a lot of the times, maybe because I'm going to deal with two streams of gender, the female, the male, with the, with the female, we can appreciate our own structure. Go straight ahead. But, you yes. know, we have discerning listeners. This is just sure. an, an, an intro so that we get into great, it. Great, yeah. great, great. Okay. So we have, when we say the cervical cancer, then mm -hmm. it means that it is a cancer that affects the mouth of the womb okay. or the parts that we call the cervix. Okay. And it is after the cervix or the woman has been exposed to a virus known mm -hmm. as the human papilloma virus. The HPV. Or, yeah, the HPV virus. Right. That is what would 
contributes to the cause of the cervical cancer. Okay. And it is not just the immediately after the woman is exposed to the mm -hmm. virus that she gets the cancer. It could go a transitional period for as long as 10 to 15 years. Right. And so one could get exposed today, she may not have anything, anything until like 10, 15 years later before she begins to um, see some signs that indicates that possibly she could be having cervical cancer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so a woman gets yeah. infected with the human papilloma with the virus. HPV virus. Sure, which is sexually Which is quite commonly, uh, should I say, uh, what? I don't want to use available, but um, it's a common <laughs> virus. Exactly. And it is sexually exactly. transmitted. Transmitted. Sure. Primarily, oh? Exactly. Right. Exactly. So anybody who is mm. sexually active is, is already highly at risk at of risk. getting cervical cancer. Right. Sure. Any woman who is sexually active. Any woman who is sexually. And you know, a lot of times we don't even talk about sexually active because we want to talk about sexual exposure. Okay. Maybe, yes, you may not be sexually active, but like 10 years ago, you got exposed sexually. Okay. So that means alone puts you at risk, even if you've had it once in your lifetime. Right. The fact that there has been that communication, right. you have a chance of possibly getting that. Risk okay. I know some of you are goody two shoes and you're going to say, well, I haven't done anything or did it. Well, the others will come. There in. are many <laughs> types of sexual activity mm, that mm. could expose you to sure, HPV, sure. the virus that is primarily responsible for, for cervical, cancer. cervical cancer, which I'm discussing with Rose Edufu of the um, Kolebu Teaching Hospital, um, Reproductive Health and Family planning yeah. unit or sure. center, center right exactly. very serious business here so sure. if you have any questions concerns whatsapp is 055 11 11 997 we're live on facebook and youtube and shortly i will activate the phone lines oh yeah nafienya i see you welcoming me into your home mm -hmm. uh yeah yeah always on point right mm. so yeah you're welcome and we're gonna be learning about this okay mm. so sure. um risk factors okay. right we've talked about sexual mm. Or ac exposure to sexual activity, exactly, right? Exactly. Which may, you, you know, lead to you getting infected with That's HPV, it. That's it. right? Anything else? Okay, the other one has to do with early sexual debut or okay. sexual exposure. Right. So when you say that, um, research indicates that people who started sex quite early, mm. let's say in their adolescence, they have about three times chance of developing cervical early cancer. Early onset of sexual early onset activity. Early onset of sexual activity. Right. About three times chance of developing sexual um, cervical cancer. Okay. Then the other one has to do with family history. Family history. And so we're looking at maybe if your mother, an auntie ever had cervical cancer mm. or any of those cancers, it equally puts you at risk of getting cervical cancer. Okay. Then we also looking at the fact that a woman might have had a particular cancer that is related to the HPVs, the okay. other HPVs. Right. So it can be inner cancer, it can be a vagina cancer. Mm -hmm. The fact that you have ever had it and it is the same virus, right. then it equally puts you again at risk of it. And then the other one has to do with um, for instance for men, a mm -hmm. woman who had ever had a partner, losing a partner to cervical cancer. Right. Because after all, when it comes to looking at our cultural environment, Men who have lost a partner, partner to cervical cancer, to cervical sometimes cancer. Mm -hmm. they could also carry the virus and then they could give to others. But that notwithstanding, um, a lot of the times, those ones have very slim okay. chances. And then we are talking about uncircumcised um, um, penis to say, right. because we said it is sexually transmitted. Um, transmitted. And so for as long as um, the man could collect those microorganisms mm -hmm. or the viruses and okay. then transmit to the other woman, there's a chance that the woman who gets such engagement with such a partner mm -hmm. also could get the cervical cancer. Okay. And so basically, these sexual related um, and then family histories and then the exposures can readily expose ones to getting cervical cancer right. easily. Sure. Risk factors. Sure. Sure. Risk factors. Yeah. Know your partner. Ah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you know multiple sexual partners. Multiple that I cannot say. Casual. Sexual. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you know, a lot of the times when I'm talking about multiple sexual partners, it's not just about like the woman Joy, I uh, yeah, am engaged to or have a relationship with mm -hmm. Kojo, Kwame, and then Kwesi. But sometimes it could be that, like, yes, it is only my husband I know, mm -hmm. but is my husband also saying I'm the only one he knows? All right. Or it is that's the only partner I have. How many Maybe, polling stations and constituencies are thank open? Thank you. Thank right? you very much. So he goes to, to your awareness them. or knowledge. Mm -hmm. 
So we're looking mm. at your risk mm. profile. Mm. We're not passing judgment. Sure. We're talking about cervical sure. cancer, but we're trying to establish and identify things that brings it closer Perfect. Home. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. You sure. could be a deacon, you could be a psychologist, you could be a, you know, mm. right? Exactly. So Rose is exactly. helping me uh, identify mm. and explain this risk profile. Very nice. Right? Early onset of sex, uh, family history, mm. uh, there should be some Multiple. genetics there. Multiple <laughs> partners, be they uh, mm. serial, mon monogamy, Easy, or, or polygamy, polygamous. or just, I mean, uh, <laughs> right, let's get that straight. If you have any sure. questions, let's understand this. Okay, so men can pick up the HPV from women and women can pick up the HPV Excellent. virus from men. Exactly. Okay, exactly. but we are uh, putting the HPV in the witness stand, right? Perfect. As the accused. As the accused. Right. Now, uh, Rose, we understand that there mm. are particular strains of the HPV exactly. that are more likely to lead to cervical, cervical cancer. cancer. Exactly. Right. So, right. let me ask. So, is there a test to identify whether I've been exposed to HPV? My understanding is that mm. typically our bodies and our immune systems can deal with HPV. Sure. Right? Is there anything, to an extent. To an extent, yeah. Yeah. Right. Is there anything that can uh, conclusively identify who's been exposed to HPV? Okay. So before we talk about the um, testing or the conclusive okay. aspect of it, um, usually the HPVs, um, it's it's over 150 strains of them that we have. Okay. And it is just about the type 16, type 18, contributing to about um, almost 70% right. to cervical cancer Joy. causation. Okay. And then there is another type that could contribute to like the rest 30%. Okay. Then type 11 and the 6 usually contributes to the um, genital warts like sometimes some young um, ladies or gents will see on their penis and okay. then around the vagina genital area, warts the genital warts okay. sure right. so the type 16 and the type eight, um, the type 6 and 11 mm -hmm. could contribute to that and so a lot of the times when one gets exposed to the virus it will be very difficult to say that just at a glance or at mm -hmm. a look you could yeah. see that this person has or um, the virus. Okay. So what is done is we have the HPV testing or the screening. Okay. So previously when we started the screening, we were doing the visual inspection with acetic acid on the right. service. Okay. It was not really identifying or isolating the HPVs. Mm. But now there are a lot of tests that you could That one really isolates, do. Uh, you know, abnormal the cell cells pre lesions pre on the cells. service. Okay. Yes. There acetic of, acid being vinegar. The vinegar, sure, uh -huh. sure, sure, right. sure. And that is a, the less expensive yeah. screening test that one can do. Okay. But currently there are a lot of them. Um, either they solve test sampling, mm -hmm. you use um, a swab stick to take the sample Joy, or we have the other one we call the HPV DNA where we use a liquid based sample okay. so at the facility they'll take the sample by sweeping on the um, cervix or the mouth of the womb okay. washing the reagents and then it goes to the lab for reading okay. or maybe where it is self sampling test it is the woman who goes to take the sample at mm -hmm. home she brings it or arranged per the institutional protocol okay. to have it to the lab and it is read so that we can identify which trains are prevailing okay. because we have the low risk strains mm -hmm. and then the high risk. High risk if right. it is a low risk, there is nothing much to be worried, but we still would need to find out is it the 6 or the 11 okay. that could even lead to the other what that I mentioned okay. or it is the high risk that we have to be very worried about. Right. And again with the high risk, we need to find out is it the type 16, is it the type 18 okay. or the other ones. Right. So it is very necessary to really assess to know which risk the woman may be carrying okay. and then that even makes it more interesting that it helps us to identify if there is any intervention to mm -hmm. offer right. we are able to do that immediately Promptly. before we talk Early. about pre-cancer cells right. lesions on the cervix okay. and then advancing to cervical cancer okay. sure 24 minutes past year of two mm. on joy 99.7 fm with me Norte by nature the program is ultimate health your ultimate guide to healthy living this and every sunday yeah, we make it our objective, our mission, our plan, our design huh? to discuss all the things that can affect, mm. uh, impact, 
compromise your health and your well-being. Today we're looking at cervical cancer and I have in the studio with me uh, uh, a slippery sweetheart of mine, Rose Edufu. Leave that part out there. Eh? <laughs> but she's a principal nursing officer with the Reproductive Health and Family Planning Unit of the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. Sharing with us uh, we're going into detail, right? And uh, we're doing uh, all the analysis that you need. I see Dede in Maryland already typing oral sex. Oh, Dede, my, uh, Dede. Up, up, my friend. Hey, another Dede. slippery <laughs> sweetheart. Dede is typing and asking about mm, oral mm, sex. Can mm. it cause uh, cervical cancer? Naked. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, there's a bit more. I'll read those in a second. Eh? So if you have any questions, concerns, uh, I'll pass them to uh, Rose. Indeed, you are the reason I brought her. Leave me out of it, okay? So, yeah, we've got to understand these things, all right? Sure. Uh, I'm sure you answered the one about oral it sex, sure. right? Sure. But let's also quickly rope in and get an understanding of telltale signs, mm. possible flags or signs and symptoms, okay? okay? Right. Which we are not saying or insisting on or asserting are conclusive. Perfect. Right? But Perfect. the kind of things that may or should alert me, a woman, mm. or even my partner. Okay, great. So I'm excited about the conclusive bits that yeah. it does not it does. Want to hear a more diverse perspective on art? Tune in to Speaking of Art, the official podcast of Sharjah Art Foundation featuring conversations with some of the most prominent artists and curators from Asia, Africa, and around the world. Listen to Speaking of Art wherever you get your podcasts. No. That when you see any of these, I have cervical cancer, no. Right, no. Um, that notwithstanding, I want to emphasize the fact that, yes, the transitional period can be very long. Okay. But in some women, it could be as short as you can imagine, mm. depending on the immune system. And so even um, to AIDS, those who have immunocompressed conditions, right. like compromised conditions right. like HIV, they have about six times chance of developing cervical yep. cancer. Mm -hmm. And so then um, what we're trying to say is that with the signs and symptoms, the number one that I want us to note is abnormal vaginal bleeding. Abnormal, abnormal vaginal, vaginal bleeding. bleeding. So explaining that it could be like for us who are Joy, in our nine, regular nine, menstrual age now. period, reproductive mm -hmm. age, you know, we see our periods, you know, the number of days you are expected to have it. But if for any reason it is abnormally prolonged, we need to find out. Okay. You're not supposed to have sex during or after, not supposed to bleed during or after sex. Okay. But if for any reason you notice that you are having post-coital bleeding, like bleeding after, after sex or during intercourse, during then intercourse. we have to also be mindful. And then maybe you could be menopausal. Right. When you go menopause, don't expect to come back to join those in the reproductive age. Right. And so if you're seeing mm -hmm. abnormal vaginal bleeding around this right. age, so we need to also um, be, be cautious of what okay. exactly could be. But like I'm saying, all these abnormal bleedings could also be for be, other, be reasons. other conditions. So never think it is only cervical cancer. Okay. And then the other one has to do with very offensive vaginal discharge. This is not a discharge, offensive nature. Vaginal. That, I'm going to ask mm. you, sweetheart, I'm going to ask you to slow down mm. a bit. Eh? Okay. Very offensive, offensive. vaginal. Vaginal, vaginal discharge. discharge. Yeah, sure. Okay. Sure. Now, some people, we've done this before with sure. you, and I'm missing the ladies Are already. Right? Doris and... I uh, have missed them all. Theresa and... So, right. Sure. But when you say vaginal discharge, mm. right, especially mm. with uh, relation or in relation to cervical cancer. Okay. Yeah, let's go back. Vaginal discharge. Sure. We've done... Abnormal bleeding, now exactly. we're doing ab vaginal... Abnormal vaginal right. discharge. Okay. So it's abnormal because for us as women, um, oh, you're supposed to have I some extent of a vaginal discharge okay. because it ha there's a gland that actually lubricates the area. Okay. And so that one is not offensive. There not, is normal discharge. Yes, it's normal. Okay. It's not offensive, mm -hmm. nor itchy, mm -hmm. nor um, discolored. Okay. But the, this particular one, it's really offensive okay. not a fishy type of smell mm. it is it is a terrible it can be a terrible odor right. and then the color sometimes can be like bloody strains inclusive because mm. of the 
bleeding that you already experience okay. and so sometimes you could have some level of blood within or not really a hidden or occult blood to say okay. but it could be quite an obvious blood right. within the discharge mm -hmm. and then again the so it makes the color a bit un undefined you're not able to really say that this discharge is bloody or it is dark brown in color mm -hmm. but you can really see that there is a great deviation from the normal okay. and then you may not experience the itchiness because it's not just a bacterial infection. This okay. is a viral condition. Right. And it's already eating up an aspect of the mouth of the womb. Okay. And so it gives you that kind of discomfort. Right. And then apart from that discharge, it, sometimes it would compare you to use, you, panty liner cannot be able to save situations. All right. It is like using a sanitary towel mm -hmm. or any other um, comfortable thing that the woman would right. prefer to use okay. to collect or receive those um, discharge. Okay. So that is that abnormal vaginal discharge. Okay. And then with time, because there is already some kind of bleeding, mm -hmm. the woman could also lose blood. Right. Because most often there is a kind of a sore developing on the mouth of the womb. Okay. And so this is also increased in the, it increases the level at which you frequently bleed. Okay. And that may reduce your HB level or your blood so volume level. we're talking anemia yeah. here? Sure. You could easily get anemia a lot of the times. Right. Um, and then the other part has to do with, remember the uterus is, um, if you have to look at the position of the uterus, okay. in front of it we have the bladder, mm -hmm. behind it we have the rectum. Okay. And so because the structure within these two organs is being affected mm -hmm. with time it affects both organs impinges, and so compromises great. those two organs perfect okay. perfect and so apart from pain that you could have whether sex or no sex like whether you having sex or not during mm -hmm. sex um you could also have severe lower abdominal pain right and that could also radiate into sometimes even the bladder wall so that it affects you during the time of urination or producing okay. urine and then it could also when it advances also affects the rectal area. Mm -hmm. It goes with time. Um, I want to use this unfortunate incident in our country now, right. the issue of the galamse. Mm -hmm. You notice that the, the oh, contaminated yeah, water is mm -hmm. coming from a very far end. All right. But those who are living downstream, along, and downstream along are equally seeing the effect of what has been done okay. there. It is the same thing. You know the blood in us, it's moving from one part of the body to the other. Because there is a cancer cell mm -hmm. that has affected one part of the body. Right. If it does not intervene early enough, it affects the bloodstream and right. then whichever organ it gets to, okay. if it gets to the lung, apart from your cervical cancer, it will give you a lung cancer. Right. If it gets to whichever Oof. part of the body, you get those effects. And so these are basically okay. the signs that you see. Okay. But that notwithstanding, a lot of the times from the beginning, you don't have any sign. can be asymptomatic. Symptom-free. Symptom-free. Silent exactly, trouble. Exactly, exactly. By the time you begin seeing these ones, it means that things are escalating okay. and we need to intervene immediately. Right. So don't wait to see any of don't the signs wait to before see anything. you come. And that's why we're saying cervical cancer is the only preventable cancer. Right. Why wait so you see symptoms or signs when it can easily be identified, truncated at every point of the of the Great of stuff. the cause before Great stuff. you get a cervical cancer. Whoa, Rose, sure. you need a rest, right? Let me mm -hmm. read a couple of WhatsApp messages. Good afternoon, enjoying sure. the discussion. This course already kindly ask your guests what effect fingering has as part of foreplay activities on the lady. Are you talking about cervical cancer <laughs> or you want her to talk about fingering, which you know it's another territory altogether? <laughs> Steve from Somania, what sends that? Okay, I, I thought he, he was go, going in the direction of whether exactly. it can introduce the virus Thank and so you. on and so forth. But so uh, maybe we'll pick it from that angle. of fingering on the lady, okay, note that rose for me. Sure. Uh, let's see, this one says, Hello, Norte, good afternoon. So, recently, uh oh, where is it? Recently, I observed some blisters around my genitals, which I asked the doctor and was diagnosed with herpes. Mm. This was treated and those blisters are healed. However, I read a little about it and I learned it doesn't really have a cure. Mm. Right? May I please know if this exposure could lead me to attracting or getting infected with HPV2 or is it that HPV 
or is it HPV I was diagnosed with? So essentially, okay. is HPV the same mm. as herpes, mm. right? He's mm. uh, been diagnosed with... Wait, I'm saying he, right? Is there a name? Okay. This person mm. has been diagnosed with herpes, uh, was treated and mm. was told they had been cured. But mm. he's read or she's mm. read that there's no cure. Hang mm. on to that one. Mm. Uh, da, 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 da. Good afternoon, Norte. Please, I had my womb removed two years ago. Okay. Am I still at risk of developing cervical cancer mm. do add your names yeah i love to develop develop a relationship uh? but thanks for sharing this is from dede in maryland okay uh she says she's the one about oral, sure, sex. oral sex okay parents here are encouraged that's in the u.s mm. to have their kids between age to uh, age 9 to 15 perfect vaccinated against mm. cervical cancer we'll get to that why that particular age range Great. right because they become is it because they become or have become sexually active why can't older folks be vaccinated a good question which uh, comes up very often sure. so um this is the homework for rose let me see this <laughs> anymore let me just clear them and then come back okay judith is the one who asked about uh, she'd had the hysterectomy and she's asking if she's still uh, uh vulnerable to okay. cervical cancer she had a womb removed Great. and she, you're talking about a part of the womb so sure. yeah all right let's deal with judith's question okay as quickly as we can sure then, yeah. so thank you so wait, judith maybe what we need to find oh, out was yeah, what yeah, led to the now. womb getting removed so why because the hysterectomy why the hysterectomy okay because a lot of the times so or let me say sometimes mm -hmm. there could be some pre-cancer lesions that may be identified okay. in assessing it the safest is to remove the womb okay. and the other structures around it okay. because it's one of the interventions that can be used to All prevent right. cervical cancer mm -hmm. but that notwithstanding if um she has even removed the wound on grounds of other reasons she sent something which says due to fibroids okay mm -hmm. It, it, on the grounds of other reasons, we have what we call the uh, vaginal vaults. You know, okay. we mentioned that the cervix is a, a, a small structure right. between the the end of the vagina and then the mouth of the womb. Okay, and so that path between the two structures that canal, yeah. that canal has is what we are talking about so we have already removed the mouth of the womb however there is what we call the stump it is there mm. and so that we can sweep on or we take the sample from there to the okay. lab i know I have one of our clients who had her womb removed right and then fully, unfortunately fully or partially fully, full, fully removed full hysterectomy. sure right but unfortunately um i think the last time we met was like a year or two ago she so has some of these changes the precancer cells changes okay. on the right. mouth of the stump okay. and so irrespective of the state we can still do the screening to mm. ascertain and then she goes back to do routine okay. screening All right. for like four times okay yeah. right why the targeted age bracket mm. 9 to 15 for the vaccine great though we'll, that is uh, sure. a further or a more advanced discussion we'll get yeah, to yeah sure so vaccinations are not for treatment they are preventive they are measures preventive so preventive a uh, primary level prevention mm -hmm. and we are saying that they um cause as hpv human papilloma mm -hmm. virus which is transmitted through sexual activity okay and so for the adolescent or from nine years for as long as this child is not sexually exposed, right. we want to protect the child from... Before, the, before, before, before. Before, before. Mm -hmm. And so that is why we start at the age of nine years. And then again, at that point, you know, they are advancing into adolescent age. We don't want to miss them. And so from nine through to 15 years, for as long as the child is not sexually exposed mm -hmm. yet... When they take the vaccine, they enjoy 100% protection from the vaccine, mm. fully protected okay. from the vaccine. Right. But from any time the woman is sexually exposed, then she needs to do the screening yeah. and then pair the outcome of result, the woman can vaccinate. Some people are doing a protocol up to um, 46 years, like you screen, vaccinate, up to age 46. Other people too, especially those in US, mm -hmm. because they have done it as 
a routine level of um, vaccination for right. their people. They are looking at even up to age 26, and they see the 26 as a mop up age mm -hmm. that maybe you might have missed it earlier. Okay. So, want to give it opportunity to, to take the vaccine. Right. But for us, since we are now starting, or we started like a few years ago, mm -hmm. we're still doing up to age 46, but has to be screened. Right. That notwithstanding, it doesn't mean that if you screen and you vaccinate, it ends there. Right. You, you do not enjoy 100% protection. You have right. about 70% protection. Okay. So you continue with a routine screening three to five years. I love the emphasis have, on screening yeah. before sure. vaccination. Sure. Because if you have sure. been exposed, then you are not a candidate exactly. for vaccination. Yeah. Right? 055 1111 My mm -hmm. WhatsApp is on the blink at the moment. I'll be able to rectify <laughs> that. And then I'll read a couple more. Sure. Her peas and mm -hmm. HPV. Great. Are they the same? Great. So they aren't the same, but we spoke about the fact that yes, these are all viruses. Mm -hmm. And then again, Joy. they are sexually yeah, transmitted. Right. And so the fact that you have had one thing, it could lead to the other. Right. Because they are kind of siblings to say okay and so i even mentioned that for those who have even hiv mm -hmm. they have six times chance yeah. of developing cervical cancer and so the fact that you have herpes and it's been treated for viruses it is difficult to really say that you have completely dealt cured. with them right. good that is why i'm sure the doctor mentioned that this is not cured yeah however was encouraged you know i'm sure the doctor will be encouraging him that phase. we have to yeah. ensure that you don't get yourself repeatedly mm -hmm. infected to right western new applied okay, and so okay. basically with the those related infections right. that is how they present indeed itself. any unidentified untreated mm. sexually transmitted infection multiplies your sure. vulnerability for the others exactly. in the family exactly. including <laughs> hiv including Perfect. hiv so you should be knowing uh, you should know uh, what you're doing yes, down there, exactly. uh, what you're doing below sea mm. level. Eh? Mm. Uh, it could cost you. This one says, hello, Norte, good afternoon. So recently, okay, that's, that's I've read already. And then uh, we've done the one about the age for the vaccine. Yeah. Uh, there was another one. We have the exposure fingering and the norasics. Ah, um, Stephen from, was it Somania? Yeah, he wanted to know about... Okay. What they call digital stimulation. <laughs> digital. Right. right. Okay. You right. want to say fingering. All right. <laughs> so, so I would say that, you know, currently the issue Joy. on board. Want to hear a more diverse perspective on art? Tune in to Speaking of Art, the official podcast of Sharjah Art Foundation, featuring conversations with some of the most prominent artists and curators from Asia, Africa, and around the world. Listen to Speaking of Art wherever you get your podcasts. It's not about sexual penetration, like right. penis, vagina penetration. Nope. But for as long as you are engaged in any of those activities, mm -hmm. where you went... Um, is that area mm -hmm. infected with right. the virus? There's a likelihood that you can transmit or transfer to the mm -hmm. other partner. And so be it the oral sex, be it or the, the digital or any other means of sexual mm -hmm. engagement. So it might not necessarily even be like a, a woman to wo man, but be. even the other... Even aspect, with sex toys. Thank you. Right? Sure, you're using sure, your sure, gadgets sure. and you're quite exactly. happily exactly. Uh, buzzing and vibrating away. Perfect. But Perfect. you are vulnerable. Highly vulnerable. Right? So highly vulnerable. let's get that clear and uh, understood. Perfectly. Right? Conclusively. Perfectly. Right? It exposes you to the transmission of this virus we are talking well, about. Sure. And indeed, oral sex Perfect. can expose you to throat, penile, and other yeah, cancers, yeah, depending yeah. on the strain of the virus. That you get exposed to. Right. And so that's why for the vaccines, um, there used to be Cervarex, which was only meant for girls. But now currently what is... Um, available is the Gerdesol, mm -hmm. which is against the virus that we have mentioned. Right. And it's for both boys and girls right. because, yes, the throat cancers are there, the penile cancers are there, and it is a man that could get the throat cancer. Okay. It is a man that could get the penile cancers. All right. So we just have to modify our way of life and then do the needful. Great stuff, yeah. great stuff. We're understanding bit by bit. We're breaking mm. down, dissecting cervical mm. cancer. Uh, we, we don't do the awareness that is, you know, just T-shirts and <laughs> All right, we go deep into it. Sure. Phone line 030-221-6541. Joy 99.7 FM. We're live on Facebook and YouTube. My name is Naughty by nature. I'm mm. in the studio with Rose, Rose, Rose. <laughs> uh, this is the type of Rose without thorns. I okay. Know, right. uh -huh. Yeah, but she's with the uh 
Reproductive Health and Family Center. Planning uh, Center of sure, the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. Sure. Do you still do your Wednesday clinics, the well, well woman clinics? Sure, but amazingly, um, sometimes some clients would walk in and they would want to access the service. So right. you can't help them to see them irrespective oh, of the days right. that they come. So we still run that clinic. and then From 9 so to from, was it, was it 9? Um, Currently, 9 to 2 p.m. 9 to 2 p.m. Yes, please. Right. 9 to 2 All women are welcome. All women. So, be it for fertility issues, adolescent reproductive health related, right. anything. Great stuff. Um, great stuff. Back yeah. on the ball. Cervical cancer. Some say cervical cancer. I have a caller on the uh-huh. line. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Who am I speaking to? Yeah, Amy from La Paz. Amy from La Paz. Okay, share with us. Is everything okay? You sound a bit down. Yes, thank, oh, thank all you. All right, share with us. Uh, please, I'd like to know about what, whether it's also uh, something connected to cancer. If you have vagina, what? Right. Okay. If you have warts, genital warts, is it related to, linked to, uh, correlated with cancer? Right. Do we have another caller? Nope. Okay. So she wants to Amy in La Paz. She's okay. asking about what? Uh? Mm. Great. So, I mean, we mentioned not too long ago that mm-hmm. the virus that could cause the cervical cancer, human papilloma virus. HPV. The HPV. Right. We have the high risk and to cervical cancer right. and then the low risk. Okay. And so the type 6 and the type 11, mm-hmm. they are a type of the low risk mm-hmm. and they cause the genital warts okay. that we have. So, um, yes, they are in the same class. Just that for this one, you don't have a cancer. Mm. However, how sure, sure are we that maybe you might FM. not have the other viruses? Okay. And so, yes, you could have the warts on the genital area. Mm-hmm. What we need to do is further do the HPV screening to be sure that whether or not you are at risk of the others and then we can help you appropriately. Okay, okay. So that is that is about it. It um, doesn't mean you you have cervical cancer. Right. But that notwithstanding, we need to know your status with it, the other one. So let's do it the screening. Escalates and your risk. If you have silver okay. cervix, you And do. when uh, Rose says lower risk, uh, we are not saying we're happy with it. Okay? Mm. We're not mm. saying, all right, relax, it's all right. Sure, you have sure, a few sure. words and life is fine. No, mm. no, 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 no. Because it's highly infectious. Right. Highly yeah. You can pass the words on to somebody else exactly. as well and the strain of the virus. Mm. Now, Rose has uh, connected me. Um, some of the, our work links us with people who are affected, right? Mm. And there's a gentleman who unfortunately lost his wife a couple of years ago. To cervical cancer. He's uh, volunteered to share mm. with us. Uh, his name is, um, have I lost the name now? Mr. Finn. All right. Okay. Uh, he's on the line with me now. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks for je- uh, joining us and thanks for uh, agreeing to share a bit of your story. We might have to take the rest later. But um, let me say uh, belated condolences, though it's a couple of years back to you. Uh, I understand you lost your wife uh, who was diagnosed in 2018 and you lost her in 2020. Is that right? Well, um, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to, to be here this afternoon. I know it's, it's not easy, but then um, we need to share to also let people understand that a lot of things that goes on that we need to be wary of. Right. Um, not to lose a loved one. Um, well, um, to tell a record she was diagnosed in 2020. That was uh, March 14th. And she passed on on July 10th in 2021. Wow. Before that, was there anything where you, was there anything that you were worried about as a couple? Um, to be sincere, um, there wasn't anything that was, there wasn't any sign, uh, there wasn't any symptoms showing. It was one time that she went to work, so she came back and was like, she had some kind of blast phase after she had her, her urine. So initially we thought maybe it's an infection. So, and she had knowledge of, you know, medical because she used to be a uh, medical counselor assistant. Okay. So... She went to the pharmacy and got herself some medications. But fast forward, um, on 13th of March um, 2020, um, she went to work, she came back home, 
and they started to bleed profusely. Um, and that's when she was sent to Asha Polyphenic, and she was transferred to Kalebu uh, for further treatment. Right. So it started with identifying blood in her underwear after urinating, and then there was a, a subsequent uh, more serious bleeding, which led to her being taken to hospital and transferred to Kolebu. Yes, please. Right. So she was identified and diagnosed in 2020, and you lost yes, her please. sadly in 2021. Yes. Can you share with us, uh, if you, you know, don't mind, um, when she was diagnosed, did they say anything about cancer at that point? Okay, so um, I was home, I think, uh, an unfortunate Friday, um, and the call was placed to me by her mom. But at the time, she was working around um, embassy gardens, around the uh, American embassy. Right, so she used to stay in a car. You know, we were, we were in Castle, but the distance was, you know, quite far. And um, her parents were closer, so she was, she was there on someone weekend. So that Friday, I was expecting her, but then she didn't come. So the mom called me and she was like, she's bleeding and she was sent to Osha Polyclinic, now Osha Polyclinic. Mm. So it was there that they gave her transfer to Kolebu uh, because they couldn't stop the bleeding and... They sent her to a bigger facility to take care of them. Yeah, so it was there that so I went there the next day. It was the morning. She was admitted. So it was there that um, she gave me the news herself that when she came, the doctors, you know, um, checked the, the open, uh, you know, her under area with a the speculum. They checked the cervix right. and they saw some growth in there. So... They took some samples so we can have a biopsy done. So when I went, the samples are ready for me to go and do the biopsy. But then, whether or not it was a cervical injury. Right. So after the biopsy, it was confirmed that it was cervical cancer. Yeah, it was diagnosed that it was uh, a cervical injury. Yeah. How old was your wife? Um, she was at the time she was thirty-seven. Wow. And uh, so you lost her at what, 38? Yes, Lee. Wow. This is, this is. Um, and unfortunately, when it was diagnosed, I think it was four days after we were discharged. But then that was when the lockdown happened. So when the lockdown happened, um, at the time, um, the. Uh, we do a quality department of Kolebu. We're not accepting referral. We only deal with old cases. Right. Uh, so she couldn't have her treatment on time because of the COVID and the lockdown and all that. There's a lot, and there's a lot we need to share and learn from. And uh, I'm grateful that uh, you joined us. Uh, Rose and I will coordinate with you. We'll see uh, how we can better can package this story. So that so that our listeners will also understand uh, yeah. the the need for awareness, screening, early detection. That's because, right. Because uh, you lost your 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 wife uh, two years after marriage. Two years after marriage. Yeah. You, you had you you have no children, right? No, please. Wow. Unfortunately. Uh, I, I, I must commend your, your courage and your willingness to share. I, I do a lot of work in this space, and very often when we do breast cancer and other things, or even prostate cancer, we forget the surviving partners who have a lot to share. So once again, thank you so much for sharing with us. Uh, yeah. next, next week we'll pick on, up on this and then uh, use elements of your story, your real-life story and, and, and encounter with uh, cervical cancer to educate and uh, empower our listeners. Thanks once again for joining us. Eh? Thank you very much. It's Thank you so much. We'll be well, in touch. Indeed. Wow. Thank you, Eric. Rose. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, very often when I share or I do programs and we share statistics, mm. statistics don't have names. Mm. Sure. Right? Sure. I remember there was a gentleman uh, we had for liver cancer. Wow. And we, he 
shared his, you know, he was also married. Mm. He was very, very confident. Mm. And sadly, we lost him about wow. a year or so after our program. Wow. So thank you for linking us. We'll share some more aspects of this. Uh. But Great. coming back, so mm. identification is important. Very necessary. Right? Very necessary. Uh, with or without early, the risk early, factors. Early, early, early identification. identification. Right. Okay. So we'll, we'll also, you know, program to look at the different steps mm. of screening but sure. let's uh underscore this when we're screening mm. we are presumably looking for the condition in people who are presumed to be well Perfect. right so screening is actually going mm. through or examining exactly. persons who are known to be or presumed to be well, well looking out for perfectly. telltale signs. Sure. Okay. Sure. So everybody can sure. go, or every woman can every and should woman. go for mm -hmm. screening. Exactly. It's not because you just ticked off two of the mm -hmm. risk factors or mm -hmm. signs and symptoms that mm. Norte and Rose shared, mm. right? Mm. Because it can be asymptomatic. Exactly. Without signs, At without all, warning. So over a long period. Right. So screening mm. is non-negotiable. Perfectly. Right? Perfectly. And and then you know that um, in as much as we're talking about the symptoms, I'm just appealing to our audience that mm -hmm. don't wait to see any symptoms. Don't wait. It may be too late mm -hmm. by the time you notice it and you come to us. Okay, okay. And so the screening is not to test for cancer cells. Mm -hmm. We are testing for pre-cancer pre lesions before, before the cancer before, before. sets in. Right. This is what we do. So even if you come And we in, have the, the test, the devices, the diagnostic whatevers to exactly. identify pre-cancerous pre -cancer cells. Exactly, Whoa. exactly. Okay. So if even if you come and there is anything, it still would not be a cancer cells yet. Right. It may just be a pre cancerous that can mm. easily or readily be intervened. Right. And so, yes, yeah, some people go like, uh, what if I go and they detect anything there? Right. What if you don't come and later you have a cancer? Right. So it's rather better you come, let's pick something if there should be, mm -hmm. and then we can readily help you. And also, more mm. importantly, the statistics very necessary. Are known cases. Very. Somebody very. has died, mm. passed on, we don't even know we it was cervical know cancer. Them. Exactly. You may have a family mm. history, right, mm. that you're not even aware of. Thank you. You may be exposed mm. or you may have a high risk profile. Uh, yeah. But yeah. on the outside, we don't see that. Perfect. So screening is non-negotiable. Very, very key. Very right? Key. Of course, it very has key. to be paid for, mm. but it's non-negotiable. Yeah. And you know, it's more expensive to treat or manage cervical cancer. You don't want to get there. Joy you wouldn't want to. Right. You wouldn't want to. Whoa. Because if we had to call in other like caregivers, mm. supporters to share their experiences, they wish they never had a close relative right. who is suffering it. Right. And so if you can part decide it should be a conscious effort right. that this is what I need to do for myself. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, it is not an annual thing. Yeah. If you do the test, you do the pap smear, it comes out to be normal. Mm -hmm. The routine screening is two to three sure. years. Right. If you do the HPV DNA testing, routine screening is three to five years. Okay. And so you can do post well the result worth the money. Mm. Well very, worth the money. Very, very, Hi, very Naughty. I had a pap smear screening about four years ago. It mm. was negative. Amen. Mm. Please, how often <laughs> do we have this screening or HP mm. this one says HPV screening okay, right? right but she starts with the pap smear good right good uh, let me read a couple more they were okay. piling up when the gentleman was on the line good afternoon Norte please can I get the audio of this education yes you can uh, I think it's available we, we also share our, our podcasts as well uh, with my what is it to share with my to go and the test She's a very difficult... Okay, I think he's referring to his partner. She's a very <laughs> difficult woman and I need the audio <laughs> to know the severity for her, to know the, or appreciate the severity of this situation. Thanks mm. for the education. Ernest in Tayman. Mm. All right. Uh, we, we do have... Uh, we are live on Facebook and YouTube. And after the program, you can access the uh, audio for the program as well. Ernest uh, mm. needs evidence to convince his partner. 
right? Uh, to test. Good afternoon, Norte. How are you and your guests? Thanks for the educated programs you have been giving to us every Sunday. God bless you all. Now, my point is that I would like to know the institution that is supposed to provide the vaccine that could be used to prevent the disease for the age between 9 to 14. Secondly, are they doing for the children in Ghana, as said by someone from the U.S.? Okay. Uh, this came up some time back. A program was launched. Exactly. Right? Sure. So, Rose... Okay, so I, I really knew they will, will definitely get we'll there. We'll get there, yeah. I mm -hmm. know, right. So, um, starting from the the issue of the vaccination, mm -hmm. um, yes, in some countries, it's, it's part of their expanded immunization programs. Mm -hmm. And like we know, a lot of things are highly capital intensive right. and donor supported. Mm -hmm. And so I know there is a quite a, an extent of work ongoing to make to it widely that, accessible. Yes, widely accessible. It, is, it would be on the expanded immunization program for Ghana. Right. But I cannot really say how how soon is going to be yeah. and so then quite a number of the private or public institutions mm -hmm. like Kolibu Productive Health Center. Mm -hmm. I know there are other private areas. So mm -hmm. They have the vaccines available okay. that you can, just that it comes with, with a fee. Yeah. And so the, it, it ranges between 750 and then 2,500 depending right. on the type. Depending they got the us type. all four yeah. or they got us all nine. Right. And so a lot of the private institutions, trust hospitals and the others, mm -hmm. they all have their Joy. vaccine. Okay. And what we're saying is for if you have children, you know that yes, they are in their early adolescence, right. late adolescence. It is better. They are good candidates exactly, for, for the vaccination. Right. It's better.